Gwen. Will was having nightmares about her ever since that night in the tavern. Every instance her name was mentioned, every time she walked past him, Will would freeze and watch her. You're right, son? asked the man. Be wary of her, said Will, lowering his voice. She's a witch, they say. Stabs men in their sleep or in their unawares. Curious, what's her name? Gwen the Witch. Hmm, I'll make note of that, said the man. Will was growing more and more on edge. Every day as a convict chipped away at him, he was getting to a dark place. Wait, alas, I don't believe we've met before, said Will to a gnome. The gnome took a step back. Will frowned at that and took a step closer. You don't have to be afraid of me, little one, said Will. I mean you no harm. The gnome fidgeted nervously, taking another step back. I see, she said. I am Alfina. Alfina, now see? There is a name. While well, Matt, good Alfina, do I scare you? He asked, taking another step forward. The gnome took another step back. There are only so many steps back you can take before you fall into that river, said Wilhelm, approaching her. Morning, Wilhelm, said John Valor. How about you stop harassing Elfina and have a word with me instead? Ah, we were just having a little fun, weren't we? Grinned Will at Elfina, who ignored him. Sure, fun. Come have a word with me. Jam took Will aside. What is this stupid gossip about you hurling death threats at Gwen, huh? I never took you for that kind of scoundrel. Gwen. You know that lass, that witch, threatened to take my life? Funny, cause everyone else said it happened the other way around. She's a cunning lass. Don't believe a word she says. I assure you she is not planning your demise. She whispered it to my ear, as witches do. Witch or no witch, Wilhelm, lay it to rest. She won't murder you, and any more of this shit will ruin your reputation. Yes? I shall be on my best behavior, good Jumbalore, said Will as he suddenly brightened up, and the two returned to the market square. Gwen was there. Good day, Lady Gwen, said Will. Gwen and Jumbalore immediately stopped and looked at Will. A token of goodwill, Will offered flowers to Gwen. To what do I owe this? asked Gwen. For you're a beautiful lass, and all beautiful lasses deserve such a token from good Wilhelm. Can I respond to your token with a question? Take the flowers, said Will, a bit more sternly. Not poison, then? asked Gwen. I shall never harm a woman with poison, such is a woman's way to kill. Not a man of honor. It was a rhetorical question, and how does a man of honor kill a woman? With a weapon looking at her straight in the eyes and jabs her right in the heart, said Will as he held the flowers as though it's a sword. Wilhelm, I'd respect you a lot more if you were a little more honest. Do you really think Skag didn't tell me everything you talked about? Will held the flowers so tightly the stems began to break. Take the damn flowers! Enough, Wilhelm, intervened Jamvalor. Nobody asked you to give her flowers. No, Jam, this is between him and me. Broken flowers aren't much of a token of goodwill, are they? Oh, you made me break it, witch! Wilhelm ripped the flowers and threw them away. If I recall correctly, it was you trying to have me killed, trying to have me executed. Far from an honorable way. You're a cunning witch. You pretend to be an angel in front of a crowd. Wilhelm, that's enough, said Jam Valor. Will, take a step back, said Jorai. No, no, don't get involved. He's been skulking around for a month, talking to other people about me. I'm glad he's finally facing me directly. Besides, I'm not afraid of him. Ronak's right behind me. Ronak is a man of honor. 
Let go of your facade of innocence, yelled Will. Oh, by the gods, said Cloak Tara. What are you rats up to? He's unhappy I didn't take his flowers, ma'am, said Gwen. Yes, yes, said Wilhelm. Is it much to ask for love in this godforsaken isle, good lady Cloak? Get out of here, ordered Cloak Tara. Disperse. Will kept working for Walby, who he thought was a good boss who paid well and on time. But Will was beginning to feel like a disappointment, especially to Tempest, god of war which he worshipped. The Tempest expected him to fight in great battles and not to help in the renovations of an underground gambling den. It was then that Will heard of an expedition to a place called Gunnerg. Around the city, the word was that groups don't come back whole from there. Yet. A new expedition to Gonark was forming. Will signed up. By the southern gates, a group of valorous souls gathered, led by one Tarek Olbracht the Alderman, and Constable Drupik, who commands the Enforcers, though no Enforcers were with us. A sorrowful group of convicts we were, nine to count. Among us, Locke, a good fighter, defeated me in a duel once. Walby was there too, and his little hin friend Hannah, and even the most famous bards amongst the convicts, Hashard, to write the poem of what would be a legendary expedition. I got a feeling this story ends poorly, said Juliet. We passed through a swamp filled with vermins of sizes of knightly tales. Then, after we made our way through the mire, we saw two goblins riding their warg beasts. But they did not attack. Instead, they warned us that they are abandoning the ruins and that some of their kins, supposedly the dull-witted ones, chose to stay there. That within those ruins is a most formidable orc that will slaughter them all. I say, good riddance to all goblins, and good riddance to that orc, should we find him. We went further into the swamp. And arrived at those ruins the goblins mentioned. We stepped inside. We could hear the intolerable shrikes, grunts and prattling of goblins. On a bridge, we saw the body of an orc, who had been taken down with dozens of arrows. On the other side of the bridge, there they were. We encountered the goblins at last and fought to dispose of them. There were many, too many, some even well armored, much better armored than us poor convicts, their little swords ripping straight through my leather. We managed to defeat the horde and arrived at a great opening in the wall. Near the opening, gigantic gears were spinning. E god! You should have seen them. I'd never seen them that size before, larger even than any windmill I'd ever seen. They spun and cricked and just near the giant ballista, suddenly asked Gwen. Will then stopped as he noticed her. The open door? she asked. How did you... Yes, yes. There was also a huge siege machinery there. I've been there three times. Only been through the door once. You didn't go through the door, did you? Well, that passage. It seemed like the very entrance to Hellfire itself. The more I hear about this island, the more I hate it, said Juliet. You're not wrong to, said Gwen. For whatever reason, they were all compelled to walk inside the opening in the wall. I felt it would be a grave mistake. How many people did you have? Wouldn't go down there with less than ten? Nine. Close enough. If Tempest wanted our death in battle, I say let it be our death. We stepped into the passage of what seemed 
to be our doom. It was a murky cave within, the very air wafted with foulness. On the ground, bodies of gnolls were strewn. We arrived at what appeared to be a sacrificial ground. There was an opening in the ground. We took a rope and climbed down. It was even darker. We saw huts, seemingly goblins made, appeared to have been recently abandoned. Then, another horde of goblins attacked us. I bled like I never bled before, but I wasn't ready to die just yet. Then, Vividium, and plenty of it. Glittering in front of our eyes, I wanted to reach there and take it all. But it wasn't the Vividium that grabbed our attention. But rather, there was a wall, appeared to be a monument of sorts, there was a mural on it. Will began drawing something over the tavern's menu. A man, chaining a large beast with horns at its center, they were surrounded by dwarven runes. The constable, continued Will, and the dwarf herself, read it. This is what she said. Lord of Deaths and Darkness, the High Chieftain, brings his minions to protect the slave driver's prize. You should mention the part where Jumbalor just walked and touched the bloody mural, said Gwen. That idiot! I know! It was becoming clearer that we are standing in front of some great conjuring of devilry. The runes began glowing red. That fool, Jumvalor, wanted to get closer. He touched the runes, but I pulled him back. Those runes appeared to be fading and glowing. It appeared the very mural itself came to life. The beast depicted within the mural was trying to rip itself from its chains. Then, a structure was built around the beast. The beast was contained and the wall returned to normal. By Tempest, I swear what I saw was true. I implored them all that we must leave, and we did. On our way back, we saw another host of goblins, but it wasn't attacking us. It was attacking an orc who was armored to the teeth. Let me tell you all now, the way that orc fought. One, after another, after another, after another, he killed those goblins one by one, dozens of them, all by himself. I had never seen a man, nor orc, or anyone fight like this. It wasn't even a sword that he deftly spun, but a doubled bladed glaive. This was our doom call. Luckily, before he turned to dispose of us, he was distracted by something and ran off. We fled the ruins forthwith. We thought we escaped. We thought we were in the clear. But then, a giant ant attacked and killed Hash, our troubadour, erstwhile's bard. He fought well, died with honor, like a warrior, like in his great poems, and I carried his body. As we looked back, we could see that great demonic orc behind us. We made haste and made our way out of the swamp and back to erstwhile, much to our good fortune only lost one. Should that orc had clashed swords with us? Well, dead men tell no tales. Will saw Jamvalor, but Jam ignored him. What kind of a way is this to greet an old friend? yelled out Will as Jam walked off. But Will had his mind on other things. He wanted to get a better job, and he heard that the enforcers are recruiting again. So he went looking for the recruiting officer, Constable Yana Drupik. Will found her after she finished off an execution. Convict Lionald, you wanted a word? I, Madam Constable, heard you're recruiting again. Aye, but I'm afraid that after some investigations, the offer of employment does not extend to yourself, Convict Lionald. May I inquire why is that? First off, your crime was assault on a noble with intent to kill, yes? 
I was a soldier in a group of mercenaries. There was a contract. I did as good soldiers do. The intent was to kill. Contract or no would make it a murder. You may see me as lesser for this, but I remind you, we bled together in hellfire. So? I am a proud and good warrior. All I ask is that you see me for death too, despite my crimes. I pray thee, Madam Constable, said Will and kneeled at her. Give this poor man a second chance to prove his pride and honor, for he shall be there forevermore to defend whoever attempts to blemish yours. Right, good step towards that by begging on your knees. You strike all sorts of warnings in me head just by your presence, convict Lionel. Blarney and half-truths, attempts of insincere flattery and showmanship where it's uncalled for. No, I will not be giving you a job now or likely ever. Very well, Madam Constable. May we all continue to live in peace and prosperity under the watchful gaze of Omar Chastil. Your Viv papers, got them all sorted out? I present them. Will, humiliated, walked away. Except, as he played it back in his mind, Jamvalor, the way he scoffed, the way he whispered in the constable's ears, he is to blame. All of Will's rage was now aimed at Jamvalor. The next time he would see him, he better run. Will was just waiting for the guards to walk away. You! screamed Will at Jam. You little misbegotten elfling mongrel! What did you say to the constable? Pardon? Oi, outside the fence if you're going to fight, yell or behave like animals, said the tavern keeper. I've seen you huffing and scuffing as I begged her for. Will suddenly saw Walby, his current employer. Will didn't want Walby to know how adamant he was to leave. Yes, you were begging on your knees to become an enforcer, said Jem, outing him. That's all that happened there, a pathetic display. I'm asking you politely to leave a private property as its manager, said the tavern keeper. Or you'll do what? asked Will, giving him a shove. Put your hands on him again and I will pump you full of acid, said Jem. No, you won't, convict, said the cloak, or you'll be before the alderman. Out, now. Both of you, Westgate. The two were led outside the city by the cloak. Right, go on then, said the cloak. Go on with what, sir? asked Jambalor. Good, said Will. You want us to settle it like men? The cloak shrugged. My shift's been boring. I had folks taking bets, said Walby. Anyone has gold on Wilhelm? I have nothing to settle with you, Wilhelm, said Jam. Will took off his leather armor, preparing to fight. I do not wish to fight, said Jam, as Walby continued taking bets. Come on now, you can speak behind a man's back, but you can't look him in the eyes and fight him? And to think I liked you. I am not going to fight you, nor do I accept any sort of duel taking place. Will stepped closer to Jam. Coward. Right. Will shoved Jam, who fell on the ground and came back up. Will shoved him again, then grabbed him by the collar and looked straight in his eyes. You're pathetic, he said, and shoved him off to the grass, walking back into the city. The next day, red balls of explosions from the western sky were seen. They erupted into a fireworks-like exhibition. Will, thinking to himself that riches can be found there, found himself on yet another expedition. Familiar faces were there. Walby, Ganon, Elfina, Gwen and Jumbler amongst others. The group arrived at the boundary of where convicts were allowed to go. They arrived at a research lab that had been broken into. Apparently, a horde of gnolls broke through a barrier and was now running free on the island. At least that's what the gnomish professor that was there told him. That he needed to find a box to fix it. Something very special to the gnome was in that box. In truth, Will wasn't even thinking about helping anyone. Nothing in erstwhile was going his way and he had no more friends except Walby who kept him fed. I say, if some poor old convicts help you find that box of yours, what would you reward them with? Asked Will. Jambalor scoffed. 
The gnome looked at Ganon, who was glaring at Will. Will was left out of any negotiations. It was decided that the group would help the gnome, and Will, in the darkest mood he's ever been, decided to still join them for the chance of finding Vividium and getting wealthy, and making sure that Walby won't die. After all, without Walby, Will wouldn't have any job. Before the group began their journey, Gwen turned to Wilhelm. Hold still, don't make me regret this, she said and cast a spell at Will, who threw his hands wildly in the air. You're welcome, said Gwen. Will realized that everything he was carrying suddenly felt much lighter. But it wasn't the equipment that was lighter. It was him becoming stronger. Shocked, Will stayed still and also made sure to check under his pants that everything is still intact. You're a man of honor, yes? What are you doing back with the shield? asked Gwen, snapping Will out of it. Will scoffed and ran to the front. The group traversed through the wild landscape until it arrived to a cave where they faced a group of gnolls. They went deeper and deeper still into the cave until they reached the other side of it where they were met with even more gnolls. Gwen took an arrow to the arm and winced in pain. Sasha, do you have anything for it? She asked the healer that was with them. Jamvalor kneeled at Gwen. Not you, Sasha. You need strength to pull a bolt out, said Wilhelm. Let me do it. Don't you dare, Wilhelm. I won't harm you, said Will. I've done it to men on battlefields before. I have strong hands, stronger than they've ever been. Sasha, the healer, moved Will out of the way and pulled the bolt out herself, not giving Gwen even a chance to prepare. Gwen screamed. Why would you? Damn it. Will shook his head at Sasha and offered his hand to Gwen. Gwen accepted his hand and he helped pull her up. As the next horde of gnolls came at the company of convicts, Will took a hit. Bleeding to death, Will didn't want to die to a gnoll, not for something that small. He wanted to die for something big and worthy. He was saved at the last moment. Moments later, Walby, scouting ahead, came running back. Back, back, yelled Walby, troll berserker, fuck. It was then that Wilhelm realized what would make Tempest proud, fighting against the largest creature he has seen on the island. This battle must happen. Walby, if I die today, said Will at Walby, it's been a pleasure having you as my boss. My pleasure, fella. You ain't gonna die, said Walby. Praise Tempest in my name. Tell him I fought with honor 